What is success for you? When do you feel that you succeeded in, well, your job? Is it when you're promoted and get a raise? Or maybe when you're tasked with more important assignments and greater responsibilities? Or does success mean increased creative freedom to work on the jobs you enjoy? We all envision success differently, and we need some sort of North Star to gauge if what we're doing is getting us closer or farther from it. For businesses, success is usually measured in monetary value. But revenue alone is a third-rate guide to building a sustainable product that brings value to both your company and customers. How can a business find its North Star, and what might it be? How to measure product success. Product management metrics. Take a look at Hinge. This dating app launched as an alternative to the fast-swiping culture of Tinder and is designed to be deleted. For the National Day of Unplugging in March 2020, they even gave out $100 to couples who disabled their accounts and went on a date. For Hinge, the number of leaving users is a metric of success. It's called good churn. Good because people leave after they found what they needed on the app. Churn rate is traditionally viewed as the metric of customer dissatisfaction or an appearance of a better, cheaper proposition on the market. The more superficial dating apps usually look at the number of downloads or active users. And they're not wrong, because every app, website, or software product has its own goals and an understanding of success, which of course, determines what metrics they will be using to track that success. But before we lose you in the depths of product management terminology, let's quickly summarize what metrics actually are. Metrics, or key performance indicators, KPIs, are quantifiable data points. Numbers that show how well the product is doing and if there are any hurdles on your path to the goal. Numbers about revenue trends, customer acquisition, or user engagement, when analyzed correctly, will tell you many things about your users and the market overall, which then will allow you to make informed business decisions. Metrics are also like shortcuts into your audience's mind that give you an aggregated view of how customers interact with the product. For example, at the beginning of the 2020 quarantine, Bumble noticed a dramatic 56% spike in video calls. People started chatting more and for longer times. In April, an average call lasted 28 minutes. This drove the company to roll out even more virtual dating features. In July, Tinder caught up to the trend and introduced video calls as well. But as we already said, metrics are very individual and have a lot to do with how you see the product journey. Product managers are very careful in choosing the right metrics that will determine everything from which updates to make to what marketing strategy to use in promotion. Which brings us to the main point. How do you determine your product metrics? Let's talk about your goals. Goals are specific steps in your business strategy. Sometimes your goal is simply to grow and acquire more users. You need to know how effective your promotion channels are, where people are coming from, and how much it costs to attract them. And for your existing user base, you want to know how they engage with the product. Hinge's overall mission is to help you escape the swiping cycle and find you a partner. I met someone. So its goals are to find you better matches, have you engaged in longer conversations, and of course, go on a date. Translated into metrics, these goals help Hinge know how well their matching algorithm works and whether to introduce changes. And then they check on metrics to make sure the effort was worth it. But inherently, any product needs to earn money and keep costs low. Besides, your stakeholders will look at financial indicators first and user satisfaction second. Vine, a culture-defining app that dominated the internet in the mid-2010s, was shut down in 2017 due to a lack of monetization. Attracting new customers, retaining them, and making sure that you grow are three fundamental goals with metrics attached to them. How do you know you succeed in each of these areas? Let's start with user acquisition metrics. The most basic acquisition metric is traffic. Or if we talk about apps, the number of users. Traffic is an excellent indicator that your marketing strategy is working, or not. Suppose high traffic to e-commerce, travel, or service provider sites doesn't result in conversions. It usually means that users bounce, leave the website after visiting just one page, and you either don't attract the right customers or provide a poor user experience. Alternatively, a high number of pages per session will tell you that your content or functionality is helpful, engaging, 
and targeted correctly. Customer lifetime value is the ultimate measure of customer experience. Multiplying an average value of the sale by the number of all transactions and the average customer lifetime, say six months before an average customer stops using a product, will give you an understanding of how much you should be investing in customer retention and acquisition. Say you're a niche online bookstore and you spend $100 on an advertising campaign on Facebook that brings you around 200 new buyers. That means that it costs you 50 cents to attract one customer. Your average customer buys 10 books a year and has been using you for two years at least. Your profit margin on each book is 10%. So this amounts to around $40 in profit that you generate from that one customer over their lifetime. This is your customer lifetime value. That's a positive scenario that shows that your advertising efforts have been successful so far, and it's worth investing in them more. But if all those 200 people bought just one book and never came back, you'd have about $2 in profit from one of them, and you'd have to run another campaign each month to stay afloat. If your customer lifetime value is low, you should work on retention by improving customer experience and satisfaction. Better marketing, improved UX, and attractive discounts all to make sure the customers you already attracted keep bringing value. Which is where we turn to user engagement metrics. User engagement shows how people choose to spend their time with your product. High engagement, such as leaving likes, scrolling, or writing comments correlates with retention and loyalty. You will often see mobile apps, online games, and social networks boast their numbers of active users. Active users are those who do some valuable actions on your website and app. For example, Facebook's daily active users amount to 1.82 billion people on average. This metric itself shows your growth, but for a broader picture, use a ratio of daily to monthly active users. It shows the stickiness of your product. A good ratio would be 20% at least. Insanely popular products like TikTok amount to 50%. Churn is the metric most closely associated with customer satisfaction and engagement. Yet as we already discussed, it's not sophisticated enough to help you learn why customers stay. Is it because they enjoy the product or because they can't seem to reach their initial goal? To know for sure, you must ask. You've probably answered these questions before. On a scale from one to 10, how likely are you to recommend this product to your friends? If your answer was lower than seven, know that it's considered just as bad as one. The metric is called Net Promoter Score. The answers help product managers divide responders into three user groups, detractors, neutrals, and promoters, and work with them accordingly. If you have more promoters than detractors, pretty good. And if the number of promoters is twice the size of the number of detractors, it's a huge success. Of course, Net Promoter Score isn't nuanced because without leading questions, you have no idea why a person wouldn't recommend your product, which is why companies often use a Customer Satisfaction Score. A Customer Satisfaction Score allows you to ask multiple questions and make them as wide or narrow as you want, from their satisfaction with using the whole product to the unique benefits of a specific feature. Ask it after the download to rank the onboarding or right before the subscription renewal to introduce improvements. And when you want to make sure that your interface is easy to use, ask customers to rank how easy it was to find the information or complete the task. How long people stay on those pages is equally important. If users spend more time messaging than swiping, Hint considers it a success. But if we're talking about Tinder, where swiping is the central part of the experience, this requires some attention, especially when your revenue comes from ads and extra features available only on the main page. Regardless of how happy and involved your users are, the fate of the product and the company will still depend on whether it can sustain itself. Financial metrics is how you know that it can. Software products, especially the ones operating on the subscription model, need to forecast how much revenue each user will generate in the long term. One such important metric is monthly recurring revenue. MRR allows you to consider different groups of customers the ones that joined this month, the ones that were downgraded, and those who were upgraded to another payment model, and, of course, the ones who churned. Dividing MRR by the total number of users, you can calculate an average revenue per user. 
a metric for understanding which subscription tiers drive the most revenue to learn how to optimize your pricing. Netflix's ARPU numbers actually impact its regular price changes. Each year, Netflix shares streaming space with an increasing number of players. When subscribers add slowly and their ARPU doesn't increase, it means that users are underpaying for the service. Netflix experiments with raising a fee by a dollar or two in certain regions to balance the metric out. Hinge relies on the strongest form of advertisement, word of mouth. When you ask your friend how they met their partner and they say, on Hinge, you're likely to try the app yourself. This model, although more sophisticated than traditional promotion, works because of the well-oiled mechanism of transforming data into business decisions. Your North Star metrics should always be available to report on the product's successes and failures. Choose a few that best reflect your business model, relationships with customers, and goals. Don't be afraid to change them if your product evolves differently than expected. The system of metrics will inherently help you make decisions based on data, not guesswork. Decisions that will result in better product, bigger value, and success for all. Tell us what metrics you use for your online store, app, or software product. And if there are any important metrics that we missed, remember to leave them in the comments below.